Hello everybody, it is I, uh, Stippling Vaughn. And uh, I'm here at my local dive bar, working hard at my latest piece. I'm sorry I did not uh, post a video yesterday. Uh, other things came up that I had to take care of. Um, so I was not able to uh, stream. So I'm sorry. So, but I'm here today working hard. And uh, I don't want to do a continuation of the Tim Sheridan, Green Alan, uh, Alan Scott, Green Lantern uh, debate. I could address, I'm going to address that later on. Um, now, the sales from that book are already coming in and they're proving uh, normal people right that it was one of those which, like, he was, this book was a disaster. Uh, but again, I'm going to address that later on. Um, last night was the uh, first of two episodes of the chat where we went over the nominations for Nobody Gives a Damn Awards. And the categories that we covered were uh, Best Artist, so we got those nominations in. If you go onto Twitter and look under Amanda B, and I have her in the, in the comments, uh, she has already posted an uh, 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 image showing who the uh, nominations and who was nominated. What we did was we go through and uh, each one of the panelists, we pick someone who we think is uh, worthy of uh, that category. And then we open it up to the chat. And once we have 20, we then go and we then do our voting. Uh, the top five get in and they are now part of the voting process when we do the award show. This upcoming Saturday will be part two of the nomination show. Okay, uh, but who we covered this week was we covered uh, best artist, best letter, best cover, best ensemble, community ambassador, best value, uh, and along with best character and most memorable moment. And so we have our nominations for those people. Now, one thing I noticed which was different this year from years past was in the past it's always been about just about the comic book creators this year was different this year uh there was more cg members when i say members like fans uh more reaching out to uh smaller creators more uh to individuals the example i gave is one of the most memorable moments was uh, when Angela Curry uh, gave Shane Davis uh, a thigh master. And we all have seen that video of Shane using that thigh master, which was fun. It was very funny. So, uh, and uh, Amanda B, she got nominated. Uh, Hers was uh, uh, her comment that she made in the one episode about uh, sheets and uh, uh, being freshly shaved and crawling in the sheets. And that, so that one got nominated. Uh, and then, of course, uh, but other than that, it was also, I want to say it was a ambassador, a, a CG ambassador. Amanda B. got nominated for that one also. And, even though she is on the show, she does a lot of work on her own. I felt that her being nominated says a lot about the CG community, not just the uh, CG uh, creators. Because uh, remember, that, that, that gets back to the heart of what CG is. CG is a... What's a is still a fan movement but cg's really also has got reached the point where 
it is we are our own community with different sex in that community and that's where I really am liking what I'm seeing because the community is saying hey let's look at ourselves look at let's look within our community not at just these creators at what being done to help promote CG books and CG as a whole and that's why I was really happy to see some of this uh, uh, stat he even uh, for ambassador he put some he I don't know can't remember it was one it was somebody who was in on Twitter who's part of CG and apparently he shares that he shares campaigns out like crazy and so he got nominated which I like to see it's one of those words like yeah you know what community ambassador isn't just uh, the care the people that put on shows it's also uh, the members of the community so I liked it a lot I, 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 I liked I'm starting to really like what I'm seeing within the CG community of wanting to uh, uh, look at the fans of these books and not just at the creators so and what also got me was that uh, while Kenneth Roquefort uh, got nominated a lot and we always joke how it's like this is a Sims a Sims a, a, a Sims show for uh, Roquefort he didn't completely dominate okay he didn't dominate every single category did he get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, of uh, suggestions did he get a lot of uh, uh, a lot of nominations yes but it, it wasn't completely uh, runaways with it so I again showing the growth and of, of the community I liked it a lot liked it a lot so and now this is where all of these creators now have the ability to really campaign for why they deserve to win for the categories that they're nominated. Uh, also, it, it should be a, almost in a way the wake up call for these other creators to talk about it this week on their shows to get people to show up at for the nomination and for the award show. So we'll see. Uh, I have a feeling uh, like if some of these creators really get over in the bandwagon and like really get over, like here's the example: is like one of the one of the nominations that we will be doing on Saturday is for best solo show. Okay, so this gives Billy Tucci the opportunity to get the fans on his show to like, hey, go over there and get me nominated vote me in uh, same thing goes with like with Aaron Lepresti gives him the opportunity uh, to like hey because <clears throat> think about it. part of it also it gets a lot of eyeballs on your project okay because people will be more like well, who's this person they're talking about and want to get over there to see who this care who this creator is so I do see a lot of positives with this now there's always negatives but you take the good with the bad but i'm I, <clears throat> like i said i this year was dip the, the variety this year was really strong i really liked it the two categories that still seem to be uh repetitive if you will is like eric weathers and lettering and uh, you also have uh, Michael Bancroft with Community Ambassador, which means that, yeah, you're going to have next year, you're going to have, uh, I'm sorry, next week, you're going to have a lot of people going for Kyle Ritter. But he's not the only car colorist. If I remember correctly, I think Kelsey Shannon won Best Colorist last year. So, I could be wrong, but... So, no, I really, I, I really like where I'm seeing... Uh, it shows, for me, I believe that this shows growth, a healthy growth within 
the comics gay community when it comes to uh, broadening the outlook of what is the definition of comics gay. Uh, to outsiders, comics gate's always going to be uh, Ethan Van Skyver and John Malin. But those within the community know that it's, it's more than just that. So we now have the ability to really help by giving these awards out to various other creators and people are like, well, Comics Gate's a hate group, misogynist is this and everything. Like, well, no, because if you were to take a look, these are the people that won the awards. And I don't know about you, but I've never heard them say these things on their shows. So, but, and of course we have almost, we have Graham Nolan's 31 Days of Monsters is almost at the end because October is almost over. Uh, please remember on the 30th at noon, Graham will be launching the sales for the Chinoo, uh, the Chinoo plushie I should say. Uh, I will definitely be getting one. Uh, Miss Stippling likes the Shadu. And as soon as she heard that uh, Graham was doing a plushie, she was like, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. So I don't have a choice. <laughs> I have to be buying it on the very first day, right at noon. So, and with that, I, don't, I know there's some overlap. I've been trying to create more is uh, in the law tube community there is a youtuber by the uh, his name is jeff i don't know his last name is he's got his channel called legal vices and on friday he did a reading of short stories by hp lovecraft and he did a very good job first of all he did his he did some testing so he's got this he did his uh I don't want to say like research, but he did his testing to get uh, this, the lighting. So he had this like moody, dark lighting. He's using a voice modulator to do some of the voices. So it wasn't just one, per his voice uh, changing. It had the voice modulator to make it really even more intense. Uh, Jeff uses a very theatrical voice. Uh, I know he is in the law profession, but now as to what he does within the law profession. I know it's maritime law. I suspect most likely he doesn't do a lot of uh, trial work. I don't think he probably may not do any trial work. But if he were a trial lawyer, I think he would be, I honestly think he'd be fairly successful at it because he has that theatrical voice and you, and you need to have that many ways with when you're when you're there in front of a jury, you need to have, you have that way to speak in a passionate manner. Because when you're doing a jury trial, it's in many ways. In, in many ways, yes, it's all it's about presenting the facts, but it's also about manipulating the jurors to sway them to your side of the argument and so i think that's where i look at that where he does a very good job with the uh how he uses his voice that if he were in a situation where he had to do a trial law i honestly think he would do quite a good job so but he did his reading of uh hp lovecraft and he's got paintings on his back wall and he showed uh, some of his uh, Cthulhu uh, 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 it's Cthulhu uh, uh, pipes and I was like I was looking at him like wow he, those are cool um, I think Jeff if Graham and Jeff could do a stream together now I know it's too late for this year but this is where you want to build a rapport and create a relationship now so like next year when Graham does his 31 days of monsters where he does some like special interviews during the month that are strictly horror related if him and Jeff could get together 
okay? And for Jeff to be on Graham's stream and then for Graham to be on Jeff's stream, I think it would be really interesting. I think it'd be really entertaining. Most importantly though, I think it'd be very beneficial to Graham. Um, he always has a book to promote during his 31 Days of Monsters. And to have a new audience for Graham to introduce his book to would be very beneficial to him. Uh, remember, Graham has really been stretch reaching out. He was on Saturday Night Tights like two, three times this last year, which helped him with his book, uh, Ghost of Matacuma Key. If he could get, if, if he, even if it's just one of uh, uh, Jeff's like, fuck it Fridays, and if Graham could get on to one of his shows while his book is in campaign mode, it's a whole new audience. And with Jeff being a horror monster guy, and also not just horror monsters, he's a big Western guy. So's Graham. These guys have a lot of stuff that they could con that they could connect to and talk about that aren't related to law. So they could almost be like, well, like, let's just do a Western. Let's let's do a Western movie stream. Let's just talk about Western movies. I think the two of them would get along great, and we would be great, would greatly entertained as they built their rapport and got to know each other through movies, such as the Westerns, the World War II films, the uh, the horror films. I think those, I think the two of them would do very well together. So now. I can only do so much. Uh, part of it is doing a video like this, talking about it. Um, but I, I really think that the two of them would, would do great together. I hope that those two, one of, I hope one of them watches this video and will check the other channel, the, the channel out for the their other person's channel out, and reach out to them for starting a rapport. For, and of course, yes, this is for Graham's benefit to help him with his book when he does his next book, which will be, I uh, know he's reprinting uh, uh, Return to Monster Island and then following that up with Escape from Monster Island. So I myself, I'm looking forward to those books and you know damn well I'm going to be, you know I'll be back. So I would definitely reach out. I, I would definitely love for those two to reach out and connect for Graham's benefit, so, but it would also, it would also help Jeff out, because it would give him a, a means to uh, get, hopefully, uh, sway people, like, hey, this guy, this Jeff's a really good entertainer, I really like how he presents information, and go from there, and he could increase his viewership, so, because I know when we first, I think it was, uh, oh, it was the beginning of the year, I think it was the springtime when Malin pulled his whole anti-kickstart and did that line in the sand thing, but he did it, he presented it in a manner that uh, people were like, wait a second, you're almost attacking us, the backers, that you don't respect us as backers if we back people uh, who are on Kickstarter. And I remember with that being like, mm, you don't do that. But I, I remember from that thinking how uh, <clears throat> it was on, I think it was, it was on Jeremy's show when he was still, do, still doing comic books, uh, Lord Crackhead. And they touched on the topic lightly. And Aldous was saying, uh, he presented it this way, is going on the exact same shows with the exact same audience isn't going to broaden your fan base. you got to get on to other shows. So it's one of those where it's like, Graham's getting on Friday, uh, Friday Night Tights. That's great. But a lot of Jeff's fans who are, who are following his show because of it being a 
law show are being made aware of Jeff's interests. So that's a whole new fan base. If Graham's on his show and talking about his book, there will be a lot of people like, wow, well, I, I do like, I do like kaiju movies. I do like monster movies. Hey, maybe I should check out this Graham Nolan guy. I, I do remember watching the Bane, the Batman cartoon as a kid. And I thought Bane was really cool. And this is the guy that created Bane. Yeah, you know what? Let me check out his book. That's hitting a whole new audience that you normally weren't hitting. It's just like when someone said about free comic book day and the comic book stores, uh, you're giving out free comics at the comic book stores. You already have that audience because you're because you're basically catering to your own audience. Get these free comic books out. Like, get them. Have ambassador go to like an airport, a train station. This. Oh yeah. Go to an airport. Go to a train station. Some place where people are going to be uh, traveling. And hey, hey, free comic book day. Here's a free comic. And that way they'll read that one when they're on the train. Maybe when they get to off the train, because they like the comic book, they'll turn around and they'll go to the local comic book store and see if there's more like what they got. So, again, broadening your fan base. That's the reason why when I do these videos, I try to put in as many hashtags as possible to try to get my videos in front of as many people as possible. Uh, now, I haven't addressed it, but what I'm doing here, folks, is I'm doing a comic book splash page style pinup of, okay, Marvel Comics had uh, the licensing rights of Star Wars during the 70s and the, and the 80s when the movies were going on, okay? These characters were the one-off characters when they of uh, the comic book issues between Return uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And that's where these characters came from. And I just did it for myself for fun. And this one here that I'm doing right now, this is Kira. Uh, he was from a water planet. That's why he has the breathing apparatus on. And what he did was he became an ally of Luke's. And he wanted to learn the ways of the Force. So... That's why I have him list, uh, listed here in the very middle of the page with like a shard. It was just like a metal shard that he used, but it was one of those where like he had it and he was like using it like a, like a lightsaber would. So, and then actually in an episode right after Return of the Jedi, at one point he was in a situation where he actually used Luke's lightsaber. So, now in the comic book, it was one of those where it's like, Luke eventually decided not to take Hero Orn as his uh, apprentice. And because of the xenophobia on his aquatic world, uh, Hero, uh, Hero uh, went back to his people and uh, desired isolation from the Empire and from even the New Republic after the Empire fell. So that's a little bit of his backstory, but I'm just working on him right now while I'm talking to you guys. Uh, today, when I do my time-lapse video, uh, I'm going to be doing the time-lapse video of the Hujib right here, and then I'm going to be doing the nomadic character here a lot to match that one so but that's who i'm be working on for doing my time lapse videos i uh, still gotta finish danny's hand but because of the intricacy and the overlap between danny's hand and the hujib i'm just going to finish danny's hand when i do the hujib so um so football will be coming on in uh, about an hour so basically when after this video loads you'll have about um, about a half hour, 20 minutes before the games begin. So, but lastly, um, like I said, uh, I hope everybody checks out the uh, nomination episode 
we did last night, and I hope uh, you will uh, tune in to the award show this upcoming Saturday. Uh, it's going to be a fun episode, uh, and it's also, uh, remember, when we do the award show, which think, don't quote me on this, I think it's like the 19th, it's either the 18th or the 19th of uh, November, uh, that is a long show, that's about a four to five hour show, uh, we will be starting that show at, um, we'll be starting that show at 5 p.m. I believe, so we started about an hour to two earlier than we normally would. Okay, so make sure you're aware of that you don't want to be turning in at 7 and here we've already started the show and we've already given out like two or three of the awards. Okay, you want to make sure that you get in on time. So, but everybody, you guys all have a great day. Um, always remember that uh, we do live in a stressful world, uh, but like myself, you take it all one dot at a time.